World War I is over. We can finally be at peace. It was the war to end all wars. What? Hitler invaded Poland? Wait, so, so how does that affect us? Because it started World War II. Really? Wow, um, so is America okay? America si signed the, um, the Neutrality Act thing, right? Okay, well, that's good. That means that we won't- What was that? Japan? Oh, wow. I think I spoke too soon. I wonder how that affects my life now. Home in a jar and be better <laughs> So, it's World War II. Hitler is rising to power, America was just attacked, men were being sent off to seas, and the women were being sent to, off to work. But, how else would we be affected as a society? The war affected us through our But, what is pop culture? Pop culture is anything that ranges from books, cosmetics, uh, fashion, <laughs> movies, for example, red lipstick. Red lipstick was actually advertised as Victory Red. The reason for this is because it was rumored that Hitler hated the color red and he couldn't stand it to be on the lips of women. Fact. Women would even risk being revealed to toxins in order to paint their lips red. Especially in Germany, they'd be r risking a lot more. You see, in Germany, they of uh, what a woman should look like and that her face should be all natural to go with the whole master race or whatever that Hitler was trying to create. Suddenly, it's March, 1941. America's in desperate need for a hero. Someone for with a symbol of hope. Someone that's a patriot. Someone who is unrealistically powerful and can be proven to have pure strength and power. Who do they ask for? It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. A few moments later. Captain America! So pretty much, Joe, si Simon, and Jack Kirby were both in a room, and they were like, Hey, Kirby, you know what, you know what we need right now? You know, since all the patriots out there fighting, I don't know, like, more ammunition? Nah, nah. Need a comic book character. Named Captain? Get ready for this. America. So, uh, what's he do? Is he just like, uh... Normal guy goes off to war, being a patriot and all that. That's why he's called Captain America. Is he like a general? Nah, nah. He's like a like a super soldier. Extra strength and speed and all that. Even better. He doesn't do. He doesn't just go off to war. Nah, nah. He goes to Germany, right? And he punches Hitler in the face. Yeah. Jack, you genius, let's go make a comic. Captain America's story is supposed to be a symbol that anyone can be a hero, even this scrawny guy who took experimental drugs from the US government. But of course, it was also supposed to be this whole situation of, oh, look who's the good guys, we're gonna win this in no time. Because you know who we have? We have Captain America on our side, kids. You know, the last time I was in Germany, and saw a man standing above everybody else. We ended up disagreeing. Films. In France, there appeared a new kind of copter, driven by a pair of oversized pinwheels. Fucking Bronco had the stability of an intoxicated chorus girl and required a ground crew skilled in the 100-yard dash. As it was the 1930s to the 1940s, we all see the increase in motion-like movies. And a lot of them were actually World War II, like the battles and such. For example, one 
of the earliest ones known was our first victory. It was called the 32nd Victory over Tokyo. Now time for music. Put your head on my shoulder. was used as a safe space for many people. For example, it was even comfort, like Shoo Shoo Baby was a man telling the children not to cry. In the time of the 1930s to the 1940s, jazz was a very popular genre of music. But the thing is, is that in Germany, music was not allowed because it was an association with not correct races. Association, it was outlawed. And so groups of people called Swing Kids would meet together and they would listen to it. Even as bombs were crashing down, there were people in Germany who wouldn't go downstairs. They would sit back and they would listen to jazz upstairs. And I quote a Judah Hip. She says, We just had the feeling that you were not our enemies. And even though the bomb crashed around us, we felt safe. Pop culture in World War II was able to provide people with courage and a safe space. And in a time when everything around you is just falling apart, in a time where your husband or your wife is dying, that's something that you need. You need this courage. You need that little bit of hope that pop culture gave us during World War II. Even now, we live in a world where pop culture is a symbol of hope, or a symbol of relation. We listen to certain music because we feel sad and we need something to help us emotionally, to empathize with us. We read certain genres because it's something that we're interested in and it's something we want to be knowledgeable in. We wear certain things because well, we could be making a stand, or we could be just standing out. We do these things, even today, because that's the way pop culture works. They read about World War II during World War II because they needed to know what was going on. They needed to learn about it. They wore certain things because they were making a stand. They listened to certain songs because they needed hope, and it's what it gave them. But throughout it all, World War II made this beautiful connection with pop culture to give us that power. So together, they just clicked, and it could even be how we won. This is a solemn but glorious hour. I wish that Franklin D. Roosevelt had lived to see this day. General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. The flags of freedom fly all over Europe.